Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Atomic Pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy. I am Stephen Corka. Good and uh, we are here to talk about a couple things. We just had Florida Supercon this past weekend, which is uh, arguably the largest comic book and collectible and anime and cartoon, whatever the fuck, um, comic book convention in all of South Florida on an annual basis. Uh, we got San Diego Comic Con that come up this weekend. Exciting stuff. And um, so thank you for everyone that came out to the booth and checked it out. But we are here to talk about some other things that we like, and um, that is Marvel's Luke Cage as well as Sci-Fi's Krypton. Now, quick disclaimer, Juan has seen Luke Cage. I have not. I have seen Krypton. Juan has not. So, we're going to spoil these. The, we're going to spoil the fuck out of them from each other and just, you know, give a quick review of it. So, um, I mean, there's no none of time, right? I'm sorry? There's, there's not enough time. Like, we have to, like, right now admit that there's no way that we can individually consume all the content that's out there. That is true. There are so many shows. I can't tell you how many people are like, do you watch this show? Do you see this show? Right. Oh, you got to watch this show. You gotta not even that. Like, like, so, like, Cloak and Dagger's out, Legion Season 2. Like, all the shit that I eventually want to watch, I just don't have the time. Don't have the time. Like, do not have the time. There's so much content, it is insane. And now with DC coming out with their, ex their expanded universe. Oh, and how about Apple? What did they know? I forgot that with the news. What happened? Did you see the people that were signing up to create original talent for Apple TV? No. Steven Spielberg, Oprah. Like, oh, really? Huge people, dude. Wow. Steven Spielberg is going to be producing original content for fucking Apple. Wow. And you know what the funny thing about that is? Mm -hmm. Steven Spielberg made a comment about a year ago saying Netflix movies should not be considered by the Academy. Nah. Yeah. Wow. I bet his tune will change now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. So, so basically... Hello? Um, let, there's not enough time in our lives to watch all these shows. There's just not. But yeah. with that said, so Juan will tackle a show here and there. I'll tackle a show here and there, and that's the end of it. So, Wanski, I'll, I'll go first. Sure. So, I watched Sci-Fi's Krypton. If you guys did not see Sci-Fi's Krypton... Um, it wasn't bad. The production quality was better than I thought it would be for a sci-fi program. And uh, David S. Goyer, who's the writer on the Dark Knight trilogy and also had a hand in Man of Steel, um, is the one that really was like the, 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 the guy pushing this, the spearhead showrunner, whatever you want to call it, for this show on sci-fi. Just FYI, it was approved for season two. And this episode, I mean, this season one basically focused on Brainiac coming to Krypton and taking the city of Kandor and putting it in his collection of cities in a bottle, okay? Which is part of Superman canon, right? Mm -hmm. And what they said is that Brainiac taking the city of Kandor is what makes the destruction of Krypton uh, uh, an inevitable thing. Um which there's a bunch of different reasons. Bendis just came out with the thing saying it was a guy that did it. You know, in the Superman movies from the 70s and 80s, it was the sun getting too close and made Krypton explode. So how Krypton exploded, there's so many different iterations of it. But in the TV show, they said that Krypton will explode because Brainiac comes and takes Kandor. Uh, they used Ra, um, their god, which which was in the recent issues of Justice League that was out a year ago, which was great. Um, and they addressed the House of El, House of Zod, um, and this other house too I forget what their name was and uh, it, it was just very much about class warfare in this city and uh, and and how you know if you're rich you get the best of everything if you're poor it just it, it explored cities in Krypton on, on, a, on a more like you know micro level it, 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 it was good in that sense um, the thing I didn't like they had Adam Strange in it and Adam Strange has, I forget what it's called, the Omega device or something like that, which mm -hmm. makes him travel through time and all that fun stuff. And But they had Adam Strange be this guy that was, like, in a hoodie and, like, a Detroit Tigers cap. And he was kind of, like, goofy at times and almost tried to be, like, comic relief. And just was not cool. It didn't play over well. And, um, and then they had this cape. Adam Strange had Superman's cape, which was literally disintegrating at the bottom and getting smaller and smaller. And the whole thing was like, if we don't stop this from happening, once the cape disappears, there is no Superman. So, you know, back, back to, to the future. future. Back to the future, totally. And just so we know how, where we are in time, this takes place. This The main character is Seg L, which is Superman's grandfather. Okay. So it's not even Jor-El, it's Seg L. 
Um, so, like, the destruction of Krypton is still very far away. Very far away. Like, two generations away. All right. Um, we, but we do meet Zod, General Zod, who travels through time for, for some fucking reason. Um, his, we meet his mom, um, our grandma, who is, like, Seg L's, like, love interest. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they, they, they almost imply that General Zod is the child of Superman's grandfather. It's a little... Oh, so, like, it's... No, I got you. Yeah. So, like, cousins. Oh, yeah, it's a weird fucked up little thing in that sense. Um, so, basically, they save the day. The cape goes back to normal. And they also stop Brainiac by sending Brainiac to the Phantom Zone. So, now, in this, this thing, Brainiac is in the Phantom Zone, which we all know is what... Oh, that's how Zod got there, because Zod got sent to the Phantom Zone in the future, and there is no sense of space and time in the Phantom Zone, so he was able to go back in time through the Phantom Zone. That's how he got it. Thank you. Um, and uh, so the cape thing was horrible. Adam Strange was horrible. Brainiac looked amazing. You've seen pictures of Brainiac. Yeah, he looked great. Looked great. The guy that played Brainiac was great. Uh, Kandor was saved, so I don't know what happens now. I don't know what season two is going to be like. Um, but... Uh, Definitely worth a watch. I was entertained. I was. You had no interest in the show. None. How many episodes is it? Thirteen. No, like eight. Eight. That's eight nice. Or nine. That's Something really. Like that. That's nice. Yeah, it was nice and sweet. It was good. Uh, and uh, like I said, production quality was good, and story for the most part was alright. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge Superman fan, so I'm not really that. It's not on the top of my list. There's a million things I want to see before I see it. You know what they did have? They have Doomsday in it, and Doomsday looked just like the comic book. Oh, that's good. But he he's been frozen the whole time, and and season one ends with Doomsday breaking out of his. Oh, so that's what it, maybe what it's going to be about is how they deal with Doomsday. Gotcha. Could be, could be, could be. But and Doomsday looked amazing, really did. And you know what? The Zod family was great too. Like, like they weren't the villains at all. They were basically the protectors of Krypton. They were the police force. If mm-hmm. you were part of the Zod family, you were like in charge of the military. It makes sense that Zod's a cop. Yeah, uh, it was. It was great. It really was. Um, in that sense. So, um, uh, check it out. Check out Krypton if you can. I'm sure you can stream it. I'm sure they'll have it for purchase on all your things. And uh, and yeah. What about Luke Cage? Well. I think, um... How many episodes? Luke Cage, I believe, was 13 episodes, 12 or 13 episodes. Was it too many? Did it follow the Netflix curse of just being longer than it should have been? Um, I... I think all those Netflix shows could cut a bunch of shit. Um, so yeah, I felt like they could have cut some episodes, but... It didn't feel overly long. Like I, they could have cut episodes, but I'm not. As, as, I'm not going to complain about it. Like Jessica Jones, where I felt like it hurt the show. I think uh, Luke Cage was fine, being uh, 12 episodes. Could they have cut it and made it a little more, you know, uh, concise? Like yeah, they could have cut it, and, and, but but it was fine. It was fine in, in length. Um, I, I believe season two was, as a whole, better than season one of Luke Cage. Really? Yeah. Now is that because in season one? Uh, um, Cottonmouth. Exactly. Right. So the second act was Diamondback. So the first half of season one. Like basically, Luke Cage could have ended when Cottonmouth got killed. I mean, it couldn't because he still had his brother running around, but uh, they shouldn't have killed Cottonmouth, right? And I don't think it really even progressed the story of season one that much. Um, the first half of Luke Cage, uh, other than the scenes, than the scenes with Punisher and Daredevil, and Punisher is on its own. Um, I believe that the first half of Luke Cage season one is the best Marvel TV we've gotten, right? Other than Daredevil. Oh, absolutely. And I'm talking about the non-Punisher scenes. Yeah. When Punisher's not involved. Absolutely. I don't think Daredevil's that good at all. I don't find them to be... That Anyways. Ep- listen, that episode with Kingpin in the prison... Yeah, that was great. With with, with Punisher, that was amazing. Right. But, um, at, you know, after season one, when they killed Cottonmouth, um, the show, uh, it just really is, is not as good. See, I didn't mind Diamondback. Diamondback was fine, but they changed the tone too much, so it was a little off-putting. It got a little more superhero Right, it got comic-y, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's not what they were doing. And, and then the other thing is that, even though Diamondback wasn't bad, like, whoever played the actor, nothing against him, it's just not as charismatic as the guy who played Cottonmouth. Oh, like, Cottonmouth cool. was an awesome... And, you know, as a villain, he was probably, at the time, you know, Thanos, we hadn't known Thanos yet, um, one of the better, like, developed villains, like, backstory, how he can, you know, the, he, he was a 
conflicted villain, and it was really well done. He wanted to be. He wanted to be good. He wanted to be right. Right. Exactly. And, 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 and life forced him. Life you know. forced him down a different path. So, like, like Michael Corleone. Sure. Yeah. So it was. I, I love the, the and I still to this day like am super sad they got rid of Cottonmouth. Um, Luke Cage season That's his two. His sister return. Right. She does. Right, right. She's the main villain. She's the main villain. Mariah. But she's, she's not a, a politician anymore. Yes, she is. I thought her political career was destroyed in season She one. tries to rebuild it. Okay. Right. Um, season two is a lot more soap opera. There's, it's it's a lot more soapy. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I understand why. Um, because of what they were going for in, in terms of tone with the show. So I understand, you know, and a friend of mine explained to me why it made sense that she was such a soap opera character. And I mean, like, over-the-top, unbelievable character. Like, um, like a novella? <laughs> yeah, like a novella. Wow. Um... But the guy, the Bushmaster, was amazing. He was like the secondary villain, <laughs> and he wasn't really even a villain, right? But Bushmaster was incredible. So you had like the, you know, the the whole first, I don't know, we'll say ten episodes of of Luke Cage trying to come to terms with him being the hero of Harlem, um, him trying to deal with his fame. Uh, you had the relationship because Black Mariah's in a relationship with Shades. You had that relationship and what they were doing and Bush Master building up, right? Okay. Bush Master's whole point was to take down Mariah. Yeah. Her family. <clears throat> then episode ten everything changes. Because this crazy the end. Yeah. Okay. This woman goes into the restaurant, the Jamaica's restaurant, and kills Bushmaster's remaining family and everyone in the restaurant. This woman as in Cottonmouth's sister. Yeah, Mariah. And burns down the whole fucking shit. And, By herself? Uh, her, she had her thugs there with her. Oh, okay. But she definitely pulled the trigger. All right. Right? And, uh, and that's when she becomes, like, she comes into the villain that she is, right? The, the bigger-than-life comic book villain. Which is who? No, just, it, she's a new character. Okay. Right. And, uh, and then it's basically about Luke Cage. And, and it's, Luke Cage is... The whole season is Luke Cage's battle with saving Mariah, you know, with how bad he wants to take her out, right? He wants her to die at the same time he keeps saving her, right? And it's basically... Luke Cage wants Mariah to die. But he hates her, yeah. He hates her to death. But he's also trying to save her life. He saves her because he's a hero, and it's about that conflict in him. Okay. Like, do you save a piece of shit? Is he in a relationship with Misty Knight? No. Missy Knight also comes into her own. She was, to me, after Bushmaster, Missy Knight was the second best part of that show. And she had the bionic arm. She had the arm. Uh, Rand Industries made it for her. Nice. Good uh, Rand, yeah, Rand Industries made it for her. I heard um, Iron Fist made an appearance. Iron Fist was in one full episode, and I will say this. A lot of people thought that the Iron Fist show was weak. I also think it was it was pretty weak. Um I didn't have a problem with it, though. I was still entertained. And I don't think it was as bad as people thought it was. Uh, I understand people's problems with it, though. And, and whatever, it's just a matter of taste on that one. Yeah. Um, watching The Defenders and then watching him in this episode, you can see why they cast who they cast for Iron Fist. Because him and um, Coulter, uh, the actor that plays Luke Cage, have undeniable chemistry together. And and the, that episode with them together was unbelievable. It was really, really well done. And, and, and like the comics. Nice. So that was really, really good. Um, so I enjoyed that. I also am really happy that Rosario Dawson was fucking gone. They got rid of her after the third episode. She was in the first three, though? Oh, my God. Yeah, dude. Oh, God. She kept bugging him about making peace with his dad. And he's like, yo, I'll do it on my own time. She's like, no, because look at the man you're turning into. You have to do it now. You know, one of those. Gone. Yeah, because Luke Cage hits a wall. And she's like, oh, my God, you remind me of my youth when my dad was abusive. I'm out. Oh. So they got rid of her quick. Thank God. Nothing against Rosario Dawson, but what's her name? Claire? Claire, I hate that character so much. Someone, I think, makes a joke in the season about how Claire, like, one of the nurses, like, talks shit to her about how she's always around, like, superheroes or some bullshit like that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it was like, it was a dig at her. Oh. And, and I think that Marvel realizes that she's a little overplayed, and she just comes across as heavy-handed and dramatic and just not with the tone of what the show is trying to do because I feel like these shows are trying to be very comic booky, like centered in real life, but comic booky. Yeah. And she brings this like soap drama type bullshit. Like I don't want to go in there to to watch a TV show about relationships. And I, I want to see a hero, the conflict inside him, and him fight kicking ass. Like I don't. And Rosario Dawson just brings 
the drama to it. I, I, I don't like the kind of drama that she that she brings. I don't like her as a character at all. Uh, so how does the show end? Um, the show ends with Mariah gets killed by her own daughter. Nice. Um, her daughter, young? No, she's older. Okay. She's older. She's a, she's a villain. She's a comic book villain. I don't know her. Yeah, I don't know her too much because I don't really read. I didn't. I didn't read that, but she's a comic book villain. Oh, yeah. So she actually kills her mom by poisoning her while her mom's in prison. Um, her mom got tried, put in prison. Right, and uh, and she gets poisoned. She visits and poisons her while Luke and and then Luke Cage comes in and the poison kicks in while he's there and she dies in his arm and you know uh, Shades ends up in prison. Really, I like Shades. I like him too. He tried to make a, a deal of the day. He turned on Mariah. Yeah. He became a snitch. And uh, and so you know what. What uh, what Mariah did as the like the last thing she did with her attorney was she gave the club to Luke Cage, and so at the end of the show you see Luke Cage up where Cottonmouth was, up where Mariah was, overlooking the club, and the way that she, the final attempt of her trying to beat Luke Cage is to put him in that position, and I think that's really interesting and really cool. Nice. Yeah, she's like, I know how I'm gonna fuck up Luke Cage. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make him pop. I'm gonna give him this club. I'm gonna make him reign. I'm gonna make him take my place and see if he can stay who he is. So that's, and Bushmaster lives. Thank God, gets shipped off back to Jamaica. He's an awesome character, man. That guy nailed it. What's crazy to me is I thought he was Jamaican. You know, I grew up down here in Miami. Like we have a, a big Jamaican population. I was convinced he was Jamaican. No, no. British. No, he was born and raised in Harlem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not Jamaican at all. Like American Muslim. Okay. Yeah, so... Well, but he, he, he... Good actors usually can... <coughs> oh, dude, but this... Accents in. This right. guy... Dude, this guy nailed... You don't understand until you see it. This guy really nailed it. Like, nailed it. Yeah. Which is why I looked it up. I was like, dude, where, where the fuck did this Jamaican come from? And I'm like, oh, shit, not Jamaican. So, yeah, man, I think that Luke Cage is worth a watch. All right, good. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in a third thing, because I didn't finish this too. Looming Tower on Hulu. I don't know what that is. Great show about about the about the fuck ups of the FBI and CIA that led to the disaster that is 9/11, and it is it is a really you should watch dude you would love this show dude. Probably. You would love yeah, this, told me about it before. You would love this show. Listen, if you're into like docudramas, um, with with you know like this is a great show to watch. Uh, Alec Baldwin is in it. Um, uh. uh the, who's the guy? Who's the guy from Dumb and Dumber? That not Jim Carrey, the other one. Oh, Jeff Daniels. Yeah, Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels is one of the main characters. Oh, dude, it sounds like a huge liberal douchebag cast. No, no, no. no. There's this there's this guy that plays this uh, this Arab agent named Sufan, mm -hmm. who's great, and uh, it's just it just really. And the casting was great. Like the person playing Condi Rice looked just like Condi Rice and talked like it was great. Really good. If you're if you're really into like you know American politics and the history, and if you're really into you know, um, if, or you take an interest in 9/11 and what led up to it, this is a great show to watch. It, and it really shows the holes and the miscommunication going on in our government that that really. I mean, it's it's still fiction. Um, no. No, it's not. What do you mean it's not? The only thing that the only thing that is. I don't think the CIA or the FBI have admitted to any failures at, at that they, time. They, they totally admitted to a lack of communication between agencies. Right, but the, the but this show is filling in the blanks. This show is about that. It's <laughs> about the lack of. And, and you want to know what they they. they Here's the thing, like one-on-one -on -one conversations that take place like at dinner, of course that's speculation. What were we talking about? And they, they give a disclaimer in the beginning of every episode that, that some scenes have been, have been, you know, enhanced for the purpose of a dramatic series, you know? But <clears throat> it's basically about, you know, they, 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 they show the, what happened in Yemen with the SS Cole attack. They show what happened in Kenya when they blew up the U.S. Embassy mm -hmm. and everything that led to that. And then it, the, the, the very last episode is when they 9-11 they, and everything that had happened across the, the country. And it, it's just, you know, and there's like testimony on there, C-SPAN things that are reenacted. So, like, there's definitely real factual things happening. And then there's other things that, of course, were dramatized for the case. But all the characters are real people. No, right, right. And, and it's, it's based on a true story. And, um, oh, was, you know that they're redoing the West Wing. Oh, really? They're rebooting the West Wing. Okay. Just come up with another show. 
<laughs> yeah, but I, whatever. People really love the West Wing. I guess so. Apparently, you didn't like it. I never saw it. I never saw it. But uh, check out the Looming Tower. It's on Hulu. It's really good. Um, it, it it's a short watch. It's only nine episodes, too, and uh, it's quick and it's good and it, it it just baffles your mind the shit that was going on prior to, you know, and and just how easy it was to do things, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Anyway, so check out the Looming Tower, check out Luke Cage, um, Krypton. check out Krypton. You know, if you're into that type of stuff, it's definitely worth a watch. Um, you got anything else? No. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com/corkercomics. For a time of pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy, I'm Stephen Corker. Love Later.